else is going to give us a speech? I certainly am. Yeah. As, um, yeah. as, as you can see, he's dressed up appropriately for the occasion. <laughs> Without further delay, I introduce Lars. Thank you all. Hello Toastmasters, welcome guests. Today I'm going to talk to you about canoeing, canoeing in Minnesota and what to wear. You may remember the movie with uh, Bubba Gump in it. I don't recall if that was the title of the movie or not. Was that the title or did it have a different title? What was the name of it? Horace Gump. Horace Gump. Okay. And in that movie, uh, Forrest Gump mentions a different way that you can prepare a shrimp. He mentions, you know, pan fried, butterflied, roasted, grilled, etc. He goes through a spiel with about 20 types of uh, ways to prepare a shrimp. And it made me think that here in Minnesota, we have a wide variety of rivers if you start naming them off. Uh, rivers for canoeing, wonderful for canoeing. The Mississippi, the Minnesota, the Root, the Zumbro. Oh golly, where do we go from there? Uh, the, we could go to the St. Croix. These are just within the state of Minnesota. The Kettle, the Pine, the Snake, the uh, Crow Wing River, the Crow River, the Chippewa River, the Pama de Terre, the Red River. There's tons and tons of rivers in the state. On the DNR website, they have 32 canoe trails listed, 32 different rivers you can go down. And it's a wonderful sport. It fits right into the times that we are in, too, because to, for two people to get outfitted for canoeing, if you spend 1500 bucks, you're all set, you might get by for $1,000. It's inexpensive. And you get a real sense of what's going on in the outdoors when you go canoeing. Canoeing routes generally are not crowded. You can run into exceptions, for example, the St. Croix River from Taylor's Falls down river on a nice July Sunday afternoon, it's going to be crowded, but generally not. When you go canoeing, you're largely by yourself. In Minnesota, no matter what the time of year, you do have to be concerned about hypothermia and its effects. It can kill you, or in terms of minor effects, it can cause shrinkage, but you don't want to, you know, shrink your fingers and other appendages. So <laughs> you really don't want that. Uh, seriously, you have to be careful of it. So when you go canoeing, you want to make sure that you're properly dressed. And if I was going out on the river, this is the gear that I would have along with me if it was other than a very warm day. I would, be, I would have this gear along with me. I would not be wearing all of it. Starting from the head down, you want to have a hat that has a brim on it. This brim is not particularly wide. You might want to go even wider. If you have an aluminum canoe, when you think of it, you're largely sitting in a, I guess it would be called parabolic aluminum oven, and you have to take care that you don't get fried. So you have a hat, you have a brim on it. You have a raincoat along. If you don't, cannot afford a raincoat or you don't want to pack one, bring along a big garbage bag. It will work in an emergency. You can picture what a garbage bag would look like over you. You aren't going to have the garbage bag over your arms, but it's going to be over the trunk of your body. You have along a PFD, like that. There's nothing special really about this one. I've just had it 30 years or so. The newer ones may look a bit different, but they serve a purpose both to keep you alive with the canoe tips and also here in Minnesota again, you can have cold weather unexpectedly. They insulate you, they keep you warm. Underneath the life jacket, if it was a cool day, I have a uh, vest along. Again, it's to keep you warm if you run into trouble. I'm overdressed today. I, I could go out when it was quite cool. I don't like cold weather canoeing anymore. But this is to give you a good idea of what to wear. Here, you have next layer. You have long sleeves. If it's sunny out, you are not going to get fried. Underneath, I have a t-shirt with uh, long sleeves once again. I might have a long sleeve t-shirt and a short sleeve t-shirt because you do not want to get sunburned. You really don't. The, uh, for pants, these are nylon, which works out good because if you get wet, cotton does not insulate. And the cotton t-shirt that I have on or the cotton shirt, if I was to dump the canoe over, I would probably take those off and reassemble my clothes with no cotton underneath. 
cotton is not good if you get wet. It really isn't. Underneath the uh, long nylon pants would be a pair of uh, swimming trunks. So again, depending on temperature, depending on the weather forecast, you want to be set. And again, you want to make sure that you don't suffer from hypothermia. It kills people every summer in Minnesota. And most, uh, most important of all here are these uh, high-tech, uh, modern uh, tennis shoes that you can buy for a high price. That You wear along, you wear something crummy for a tennis shoe, these just happen to be stylish. Because over the course of the day, odds are that you're going to be wading in mud at some point. You're going to be wading in mud, and you don't really want to take along good shoes for that. So here are these, uh, these wonders. See if they behave. There, they're behaving. Okay, and remember that you have your canoe paddle along. So if the uh, if the lumberjack Jills or the farmer daughters that you might encounter along the way, you know, if they go crazy based on your shoes, you can <laughs> have defensive maneuvers involving your canoe paddle to uh, to keep them away. You can bar them from you. Canoeing in Minnesota, wonderful thing. When you think of the benefits, you're properly dressed. You go out. You enjoy it. It's good for your mental health. You can go fishing. The wildlife is uh, incredible. The wildlife that you will run into when going down a stream. There's swimming available. It's a good form of exercise. And you get an environmental education along the way, too, because it's you out in nature and you're floating along and seeing things that you normally don't. It's different seeing things in real life as compared to seeing them on TV. Getting back to Bubba Gump, I guess you could say that canoeing is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>